Welcome everyone to Twins Tours Academy podcast show and today I'm so excited because I am doing a podcast with my twin brother Tony. It's my first time doing direct podcast for him because we have a great surprise for you today and we want to tell you that Tony is so excited because he just released the pre-order of his very first book, Crossing the Hidden Bridge. And are you excited, Tony, about it? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sharing this simple, simple story with the whole world, with the international world. Yeah. How many years it took you to write this book? And tell us how the idea came to your mind. Actually, not many years, only three years it took me. Um, exactly after uh, the corona hit in the year uh, 2000, and as everybody knows, no tourism at all. So uh, this inspired me to fill my time in a healthy way. And finally, finally, I have time to write because a lot of people who come on our groups would always ask me, I want your information, but I never have time. But uh, the past three years, actually, we had a lot of time. So I step by step, stage by stage. And finally, after three years, uh, I have now the book ready, Crossing the Hidden Bridge, talking mainly about the Christians of the Holy Land. Yeah, I remember that time when you were working hard every day almost writing and it was like you dedicated a lot of time in writing this book and this is a give a big gift to the world to hear about the christians of the holy land now the name of your book is crossing the hidden bridge what do you mean by that well there is a bridge uh, at mount carmel when i was I was lingering and hanging between two big ravines. And as I write in my story, I'm going to read you the introduction called Grand Pastorals. I happened to see that bridge from afar. So I was wondering, uh, could th this bridge be us, the Holy Land Christians? So in, I, in my book, I write about our very rich heritage, I write about the different parts of, of that bridge. I mean, I write all about the people of the Holy Land. I write about uh, the Christians of Israel, the Christians of Jerusalem, the Christians of the West Bank and Gaza, because there's a big difference between them. And as well as the Messianic Jews, and as well as Christians who come from a Muslim background, so I talk about these five different parts of the bridge. And then finally, I write about how this bridge is revealed, how we, the Christians, are now like a diamond uh, that is getting polished so it can shine more. And even more than that, how you, in the West, if you find that bridge as well now is exposed to you, you should take action and and walk on that bridge. Come to the Holy Land here. Come with us, Twins Tours, and you will interact with the living stones, with the Christians of the Holy Land as well, with the local church as well. It will be a big blessing Great. for uh, the Christians of the Holy Land. Great. Can you tell us in general, how many Christians are in the Holy Land? What's the, how many Jews? How many Christians? What is the demography of the land? In general, of course, Israel, Israel is a Jewish city, Israel. Uh, the majority are Jews, 80% are Jews almost. And of course, as you know, we live in a sea of Islam, a sea of Jews and an ocean of Islam. So Islam in, in the country here is 17%. It's a big minority. And the Christians, I can say, one and a half percent of, of the whole country. So again, majority are Jewish, 80% are Jewish. Muslims are a big minority, 17%. And we Christians are only uh, a small minority, one and a half percent of, of the country here. 
But in the Middle East, there's around 5 to 15% in the Middle East, almost 10 million people in the whole, 10 million Christians uh, in the whole Middle East. So your book talk about the 1.5% Christians in the Holy Land, and you speak about them in details because you had this vision, I remember. You wanted the West to know about us. You wanted the West to know about the indigenous believers, indigenous Christians in the land. Absolutely, because like I know like the geographic center of Christianity have shifted to the West from its original a place here, the Holy Land, because Jesus came from here, from, from the Holy Land. So his culture was Middle Eastern. He spoke uh, uh, the Semitic languages, which were from here, from the Middle East. And we, the Christians of the Middle East, today have this unique lens for understanding the teachings of Jesus and interpreting the Gospels through, through our Middle Eastern eyes. So we have a shared culture and language uh, with Jesus. And we kept these traditions throughout history. So I can say we are the hires of the biblical culture uh, of the land of the Bible. Um, because as, as I said, we've been here a minority for thousands of years. And we made it like we kept our faith for, for thousands of years. And the time is now to start to really appreciate more the Christians uh, of the Holy Land. Because like somehow, as I said, we've been neglected uh, for the past centuries. Wonderful. Look, people are waiting. They are excited. The people who are listening in podcasts right now or all the social media, Facebook or YouTube, Tony now will read for you. Uh, the introduction of his book. And just to remind you before he starts reading, if you pre-order today, you will save $10 on the book and get a free bonus of items equivalent to $125. You're going to get, if you pre-order today, from today till the 11th of December, you're going to have an instant access to the first chapter of the book, Crossing the Hidden Bridge. You're going to have a discount code of $100 for Twin Tours Academy. You know, me and Tony developed throughout the years 12 courses studying these Semitic languages. He's talking about Jesus languages, learning biblical Hebrew, learning Aramaic, geography of the Bible, idioms from the Bible through the indigenous Christian mindset. So you get $100 discount on the academy. And also, you get a free ebook written by me called Heading to the Holy Land. If you want on your heart to bring a group to Israel, this book will give you step by step what you need to know and how to prepare and pray to bring a group to the land. And the book will ship to you because it will be released to the world on December 11th, 2023. But you will get access to the free bonus, all these items I mentioned, if you order now. So, Tony, go ahead and read for us a little bit from your book. So, again, it's about uh, 12 pages, but I will not read the 12 pages. I will read... Uh first few pages talking about in the introduction how I start writing my book talking about Grand Pass Trolls so crossing the hidden bridge the Christians of the Holy Land and I'm going to start as a child I often heard stories of how my grandfather loved nothing more than going on a sarha the Aramaic word for a stroll he loved striking out in nature on his strolls with family, traversing his vast land and the mountains as he pointed out the ancient path. The family would take a few provisions for the day and walk through the open hills with no specific destination, leaving behind the burdens of life. Growing up in Jerusalem, I always had this inner feeling and desire to explore new places. 
I'm sure it came from my grandfather's love for his trolls. I found refuge in escaping the craziness of the city and taking a break, especially during the holidays. I still have the desire today. I often travel to the north with my wife, Sausan or Shushana, which means in Hebrew, the artist flower, and our two kids, Joseph and Karin. We typically find ourselves in Haifa, Sausan's hometown. And even in the north, I find myself longing for a stroll for escape. I usually go out to the vast area of Mount Carmel near Haifa. In the mountains, I wander endlessly, unrestricted by time or space, moving freely without restraint, following where my spirit takes me. As someone who enjoys thinking and being alone, walking always helps me put things into perspective. These strolls nourish my soul. They help me let go. When I started, when I started strolling alone, I often lost my way. As a kid, grandpa's comments about the ancient paths had never been as interesting as throwing rocks or playing. I took numerous before I found an eye for the ancient paths. But once found them, I regularly encountered prehistoric caves and ancient rock formations. Each time I ventured further and further into the hills, discovering my thoughts, finding new terrain. The white flowers always caught my eye too, showing themselves to me in new ways. Every walk was an adventure. The ancient past and the beauty of nature, my personal invitations to meditation. One time with the Mediterranean Sea as the backdrop and scattered clouds making a blue sky pop, I scrambled along some rocks until I lost the ancient path. But I wasn't concerned. The quiet stroll was making me better. The farther I went, the deeper I felt the silence. I found myself sitting on a rain-smooth rock perched on an overlook. I sat soaking in the view of the sea, the valley, the sky, and the mountains that lay before me. I was on Mount Carmel that day. The name Carmel comes from two Hebrew words, Kerem and El. Together they mean vineyard of God. The scene before me was proof that the person who named this place did so apathetically. As I soaked in the scene and my eyes scanned the horizon, I noticed a small opening and hidden there between the trees, a small bridge came into focus. The narrow structure hung between two terraces in the distance, supports in the middle, connecting the footpath between the terraces. Silent and steadfast, the bridge looked solid and safe to walk on, built to make people's passage between the hills easier. A gentle breeze blew on my face and my body relaxed. I felt a sense of peace come upon me, perfect. Then a thought struck me, could this bridge be me? I decided I need a closer look. So slowly and carefully, keeping close to the earth, I began making my way to the bridge. As I scrambled between rocks and trees, bushes and flowers, my feet found their way back to the ancient path. Although it was overgrown, I had rediscovered the ancient way. From that point on, the ancient trail showed me the way and I walked with calm confidence toward my destination. The bridge slowly moved from the horizon to the foreground of my vision. As I approached it, I realized the bridge was not small as it had seemed from a distance. It was massive. The bridge seemed steady and capable of bearing my weight as I stood in front of it. Yet I hesitated. Should I step on it, onto it? My heart began to race. Was I brave enough to cross? It took a few minutes but my heart eventually returned to a normal rate. And I took a step of faith. The wooden planks protested my footfalls with squeaks, but they remained stable. Once I reached the center, I paused again. The view was spectacular. Beyond the valley and slopes below, I could now see the vistas of the city of Haifa nested between the Green Pine Mountains. How had I not discovered this hidden bridge before? 
so close to the city, yet calm and impressive, hard to find, but breathtaking. You may be thinking that you'd like to stand on this bridge too. The good news is that the walk to it is pretty easy, and most people could reach it without a problem. It's close to the city, though it's hidden in the mountain, but the trail is steady. And even though to some, the thought of crossing a bridge hidden in the wilderness might seem intimidating or terrifying, I can assure you it is sturdy and safe. I have now walked it several times and the view is totally worth it. The bad news is that there are almost no signs pointing the way to this bridge. The path leading would be almost impossible to find on your own. Even if someone showed you the trailhead and got you started, you would likely get lost since you have not spent a lifetime strolling through the Carmel Mountains or been taught how to discover the ancient path by your grandfather. The path may be easy to walk, but it's often hard to see. If you really wanted to find it, I would suggest you take a guide. I and see, that's... Production continues. I'm Tony. I'll be your guide. Wow, that is really a good, good introduction, Tony. And this is a to remind the ones that are hearing us in uh, this podcast and social media. This is a real physical bridge in Haifa that no one knows about. Only the locals know about. My question: Can you take groups there? Can the buses reach there of tourists? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a place you can get to, of course, definitely. That is amazing. Again, guys, to remind you, if you pre-order from today till December 11th, 2023, you're going to save $10 on the book price. And you can get free bonus worth $125. And you can get the complete introduction and the first chapter, Crossing the Hidden Bridge. And also a discount of Twin Stores Academy for $100. In Twin Stores Academy, we keep uploading new courses almost every month. And you're going to get a free ebook written by me called Heading to the Holy Land. I wrote a book about what do you need to know before you come to visit the land of the Bible. And all of that, you can see all the details, you can see all the links in the description below in the podcast and other channels. So just click on the pre-order button now below in the link and you're going to get to all these materials, especially Tony's book. So Tony, anything else you want to add? Yeah, again, as we started to say, the Church of the Holy Land may be small, but we are that bridge. We are that hidden bridge. And God has put us here uh, in the Holy Land in this strategic position to reach out to our neighbors. So we know their culture and we've been living here for centuries. So pray for us that we would faithfully live out our calling for God that he has put on our lives and to be that hidden bridge where everyone steps on, but we bring everyone together. So, and also I want to encourage you when you find this hidden bridge, the Christians of the Holy Land, you need to cross on it. And when you do, you will also discover more beautiful things that you have never experienced before. So, so we would encourage you not only to pray, it's good to pray, but to come and visit the land here. Me and my brother, Andre, we see ourselves as two small hinges that can move big gates. Yeah, right? the groups Again, need to come. Yeah. yeah, and the groups need to come and to walk on that bridge, Tony. And like, okay. and this is a big job you have done. You presented the Christians of the Holy Land to the Western world. Finally, our voices will be heard because of your book. People will yeah. learn about all the Christian denominations in the land. 
and where everything started here. So this is a really good book to read to educate Westerners about us because most Westerners, when they come to Israel, they don't think that we exist even. They don't think that there are indigenous Christians, believers in the land of the Bible where all started here. So they tend to forget about this information. So this book like, has a different viewpoint. I... I try to help people understand the historical Jesus. So can, that not only like to see the physical beauty of the land, but also the spiritual uh, beauty of the land. Again, uh, like because that physical connects us to the spiritual and God entered our world so we can enter his word. So I'll finish with this example. Jesus is not the cool, blonde-haired, blue-eyed homeboy dude, right? In the Middle East, we see Jesus in his real image. We focus not only on his divinity, but also on his humanity, all right? So we see his real image. So to know better the spiritual Jesus, we have to know better the historical Jesus. And here, everything talks about, we still carry the smell of of Christ. Our heritage, rich heritage, um, helps people explore more and understand more of the Bible. Our culture, our like our language, like we the Christians here have this unique lens, as I said, of understanding the teachings of Jesus. Great. Yeah. I just want to add one more thing, Tony, because in very soon your book will be also released on Amazon. And for people who want to buy the book also in Amazon, they can go there and type Crossing the Hidden Bridge, Christians of the Holy Land, and they're going to see the hardcover and the paper book, even the Kindle is there. And also very soon we're going to do audio audiobooks for Tony's Crossing the Holy Land. So thank you all for your time, for listening to this podcast. Please share, share this podcast with more people that want to hear about the land of the Bible. And we thank you all so much. And thank you, Tony, for today. And we will see you all soon. There is a lot of things happening at Winston's Academy. I will end with this too. We have a webinar once a month. So if you go to twinstours.com slash webinars, you're going to see the next webinars for the next three months. So each month we have a new webinar. The one that is coming soon on October 5th on Thursday will be about the Feast of Tabernacles. We say Sukkot. And you're going to learn about this Jewish holiday. And Tony will be the teacher. The one after it, in November 2nd, it will be also Thursday at 7 p.m. Israel time and 12 p.m. Eastern time or 11 a.m. Central time. I'm going to speak about the Aramaic Syria community of Jerusalem and we're going to watch a video about it. And also on December 7, Tony will have another teaching and a webinar speaking about his book before December 11th, his release, officially release the book to the Western world. Again, today's podcast is the pre-orders. If you pre-order it today, it will be on a discount. And if you buy it later, you're going to pay the price much more higher. And we gave you a special offer for today. Great. Thank you all. And... Also, one more thing. If you buy the book, give us reviews. Give Tony reviews on Amazon. Give the reviews will help us to get higher rates and higher, like more people can see it. It's not because we want to make all the money. It's not because we want to make income. No. We want more people. More yeah. More people to hear about it. So the more reviews you give Tony's book, the more people can hear about the Holy Land Christians, the indigenous believers from the land of the Bible, where everything started and where everything will end.
Thank you all, guys.